thoughts on the occasion of the 90th anniversary of the Indian Air Force. It is indeed an important occasion for all air warriors as we reaffirm our commitment to protect the nation's sovereignty and integrity at all costs. We also pause to remember and pay tribute to our predecessors whose fortitude, vision and courage has allowed us to be counted amongst the best in the world. Recent events on the global landscape have clearly indicated that the presence of a strong military is imperative to ward off external threats, to deterrence, and if deterrence fails, to neutralize those threats. Therefore, the armed forces in general, and the Indian Air Force in particular, will continue to remain a linchpin in the national security matrix, both as a coercive deterrent as well as a war-winning instrument. Over the years, the Indian Air Force has proved its capability across the entire spectrum of conflict, ranging from peace, no war, no peace, and conflict situations. Traditionally, wars were fought on the land, sea, and in the air. Today, newer domains of cyber and space are increasingly affecting the conduct of operations, even in the traditional realms. To absorb these changes, the Indian Air Force is on a path of transformation so that we can fight and win tomorrow's wars. We are in the process of acquiring and operationalizing cutting edge systems in our inventory. At the same time, the task of upgrading the existing inventory of aircraft, weapons, and other combat support systems continues unabated. <coughs> we continue to be actively deployed while at the same time, expediting the operationalization of recently conducted systems like the Rafal, the Light Combat Aircraft, S-400 among others. Today, as I speak, the Indian Air Force continues to be ever vigilant and deployed. Our air defense elements are deployed 24-7, 365 days of the year to prevent any violation or transgression of our national airspace. Our SAJW units continue to be on alert and our fighters are always on readiness to be scrambled in a matter of few minutes to counter any emerging threat. In the last one year, the transport and helicopter fleet has been extensively utilized to provide relief to our citizens during floods and other natural calamities across the country. Our helicopters played a pivotal role in rescuing trapped passengers from the Devgad ropeway, as well as in containing forest fires in the Sauli and Sariska Tiger Reserves. Our C-17s flew 28 missions and evacuated over 2,800 citizens from Ukraine in the early part of this year. The Indian Air Force participated in Exercise Blue Flag in Israel, Exercise Udara Shakti in Malaysia, <coughs> the Tactical Leadership Program in Egypt, the ALTC in UAE, and the recently concluded Exercise Pitch Black in Australia. We also hosted Oman for the Exercise Eastern Bridge in February this year. Participation in such exercises presents us with an opportunity to demonstrate our operational prowess and strategic reach while exercising with some of the best air forces of the world. Our focus has been on building indigenous capabilities and also upgrading our older equipment. We are totally in sync with the government's push towards Sarkandirvartha and in the next few years, we are looking forward to inducting the LCA Mark 1A, the LCT-40 trainers, indigenous weapons and different radars. The light combat helicopter has been inducted into the Air Force yesterday. And I am confident that this helicopter will add teeth to the Indian Air Force's strike capability. We are fully committed to the development of the LCA Mark II and the AMCA. The induction of the C-295 is a step in the right direction and will boost Indian aerospace manufacturing ecosystem. We were also the first service to sign a contract under the IDEX program for counter UAS systems. The Mayer Baba II scheme has also been launched and we hope to see significant progress in the domain of unmanned aerial systems. In line with our Honorable Defence Minister's vision of transforming the Indian Air Force to an aerospace force, we see space as a natural extension of the air medium, and we understand the need for exploiting this domain to the nation's advantage. Space-based assets significantly enhance the potency of air power, and therefore our strategy is to fully integrate our air and space capabilities 
to have a common picture of the aerospace medium and to enable optimum force application. Airport has the unique capacity of undertaking independent strategic operations as well as operations coordinated with sister services and other arms of the national security apparatus. We understand the imperatives of joint planning and execution in future wars and are keen on integrating the efforts of the three services. We believe that the model of integration that we adopt must be future ready. It must reduce the levels of decision making and capitalize on the strength of all three services. We need an organizational structure that is best suited for the Indian conditions and our geopolitical imperatives. We have recently updated and revised the doctrine of the Indian Air Force to keep it relevant. The next step would be to use our doctrines and well-trained manpower to evolve employment philosophies and concept of operations. This would require joint planning and joint execution of plans. No single service can win wars on its own and this holds good even for the future. To keep pace with the technological developments in the field of aviation, the training pattern, curriculum and methodology has been made modern, innovative, flexible and disruptive. I am confident that the benefits of the same would be reaped by the service and the nation in the future. Recruitment of air warriors under the Agnipath scheme has been streamlined and 3000 Agni V Vayu will be inducted into the Air Force in December this year. The Indian Air Force takes pride in fostering an environment of sportsmanship and competitiveness. Our sportsmen prove the medal once again by bagging three medals in the Commonwealth Games 22 held in Birmingham. <laughs> we as an organization are gender agnostic and recognize merit and performance above everything else. A high ratio of women officers in the Indian Air Force is testimony to our commitment in providing equal opportunity and level playing field for every individual irrespective of gender. These officers have proved themselves on every occasion and it is a matter of pride that one of our women helicopter pilots has recently been conferred with the Vayu Sena Medal Gallantry for her contribution to disaster relief operations during the flash floods in Madhya Pradesh. Induction of female Agnivirs is also planned next year. I feel it is an opportune time for us to transform this service into a modern, future ready and technologically superior aerospace bar by the time we celebrate our centenary 10 years from now. I am sure all air warriors will put their best foot forward in that direction. I also exhort all stakeholders especially the DPSUs, private industries, MSMEs, to continue providing unflinching support to enable this transformation. As we reaffirm our commitment and resolve to safeguard our nation's sovereignty, I take this opportunity on behalf of all air warriors to express my gratitude to the nation for the trust, confidence and support entrusted in the Indian Air Force. Thank you, Jai.